What's good? It's Fever. Today I wanted to talk a little bit more about Albion Online, but the stuff that I'm interested in, like PvP or GVG content, I'm not really a good resource as I kind of have this mental block about spending a ton of time in a beta to be able to participate in any of it. That said, I took it upon myself to find someone to talk to who could clue me into some of the more group-based, guild-based, player versus player interactions that I can come to expect with the release of Albion Online on July 17th. Quick note, this video is sponsored, but we aren't even listening to my opinion or thoughts this time around. We'll be getting our information from a player who has played a lot through multiple betas since 2015 all the way through. He leads a guild in the black zone and has been so helpful and active within the community that he's been given chat mod status by Albion Online. He goes by the name of Karen in game and I got to pick his brain quite a bit. So Karen, to start off, how much Albion do you actively play? Well, um, I know that in the first week of beta just now, I had almost 70 hours into the game after the first week. And well, but most of the time it was just organizing and getting others to do the stuff. Uh, so my actual in-game playtime is a bit lower. But yeah, I invest a lot of time into Albion. And from my understanding, you lead a guild that is based in the Black Zone. Yeah, we're in the medium black zone, so not for the real hardcore players with uh, most of the time loads of members, 200 plus, but also not for the um, too casual, but still interested in endgame PvP content guilds. So we're in between. We're, yeah. With similar death and death penalties for the black and red zone, would you be doing the same thing in each? There are no re uh, there are only watchtowers in the red zone, so you can't have a like I said small own town for your guild. And these small towns, they um, have a lot of meaning. They give you better crafting stations than you have in towns. You get more resources back when crafting there, so that gets you ahead a lot faster. Plus, um, in black zones, there's a um, there are more resources to gather. Then in red zones, um, the respawn rates are different and uh, everything's a bit more denser. So that's also an advantage of living in the black zone. So we'd always prefer living in the black zone also because of the resources. And if you're in black zone, you die quite often. So you need more resources. So that balances it a bit. And in the black zone, you don't have the game supplied towns and services. So I, I imagine as a guild, you need to be self-sufficient. And if you need something, you need to build it for yourself. Yes, um, these are uh, completely player made fully. Everything is just flat land. And then we can decide, I want that building over there. I want that crafting station over there. Let's get to it. And then everybody in the guild has to help get resources, get stone and everything. So we can have our own little city. So run me through a typical day of playing Albion for you. So my day looks kind of like this. I log in, I check our um, guild bank to see if I need to craft something for my guild mates because um, we've all separated. Everybody has their own item to craft. And then we check if our storage is empty on that specific item. I personally like to go gathering as a star to get me going, get some resources in do something productive. And then uh, the later in the day, we start building groups. We either then go uh, group farming more efficiently as a, like as the Zerk, but for farming, uh, we kill a lot of um, elementals or uh, go leather gathering and kill a lot of mobs together. We basically don't want people to do solo stuff in the black zone because that's not as efficient as doing it um, in a group so we also have a lot of group activities then it comes down to what you like to do uh, either you're a pvp guy or you're not so the pvp guy but you enjoy the black zone because of its other benefits and accept the fact that you could be attacked but you also have your guild in the back that you can call for help anytime um, so either you go into a dungeon or do a raid uh, something really big which we need a lot of people for or um, you go to these hourly chests or daily chests, which have a lot of resources and valuable uh, artifacts and items in them. And you fight over them against other competing guilds most of the time. 
Let's turn the focus over to PvP and GVG, the, the more group-oriented stuff, as for a solo player, you know, yeah, there's dueling, yeah, you can roam, I guess you can roam with a group anyway, but there's not a, too much content catered towards a single player. You mentioned the chests, so a chest will spawn and groups will rush over to it and loot it and try to fight off other players. How many players can you expect to show up and how many players do you want to go with? Well, it starts with an hourly chest, a chest that spawns every hour. The value of the chest is the lowest compared to the others. You can expect some like five to ten people showing up depending on where the chest is. I can't really say for yellow and red zone chests. I know from last beta that they were actually quite popular. And in the black zone, they mostly focus on the daily chests or the weekly chest. The daily chests, you can expect oh, some small Zerg, like 10, 20 people fighting around this chest because it really has value. And then on the um, every Sunday, the, the castle events, which are the weekly chests, and they have a huge value. You, you need your whole guild as a transportation means to get all the loot inside the chest from A to B, and you need everybody in your guild to um, try and conquer the castle. It's the biggest open world PvP event which happens every Sunday and every high tier guild and every low tier guild uh, kind of tries to get into another guild just to take part in that event. And it's uh, castle fights, it can sometimes be like 300 people in one zone fighting against each other. So it'd be um, one alliance and the normal uh, yeah, occasionally has the castle and the other tries to attack it. They have to break down the gates of the castle first and then get through the NPCs which respawn and they're also quite strong depending on how your guild is built up. And that all in all takes about two hours. So it's a lot of preparation uh, before that and then but the reward if you are able to take it is just huge. So the way this all sounds is that there aren't any hard fast rules, it's just as the rarity of a chest goes up, there are just different types of rewards or more rewards, and so the group sizes will self-regulate because you aren't going to create a group of 20 to fight over a chest that only drops 3 items for 20 people to split. But I do want to know if any of the drops from these chests are exclusive to the chests, as that could force guilds to strong arm even the, the lower chests with huge zergs. Yeah, it's um, nothing exclusive. You can get those stuff uh, by doing other things, just not in that amount and in that short period of time. And also high tier and valuable artifacts, which can be uh, used to craft even better weapons. So those are more of the open world objective based stuff. What can you tell me about the GVG territory combat in the game? I checked out your YouTube channel and I saw a bunch of it there. Yeah, <laughs> well, um, we we'll use the material I upload to um, sit down and talk about the fights afterwards so we can strategize afterwards. It basically works like this. Um, a guild either has or does not have a territory. If the guild does not have a territory, it can go to a war camp and declare war on the nearest territory uh, next to the war camp. Every territory every zone has its own time zone which consists of four hours uh, so let's see our our plot uh, is attackable from 18 utc to 22 utc so if somebody declares uh, an attack of, uh, on our plot from one of the plots which are connected to our plot uh, if you can follow me um it will always start at 18 utc our first gvg is always on 18 utc these are almost 5v5 arena battleground type fights, like nobody can butt in. That hopefully I'm showing off on the screen, but how often do these actually happen? Actually almost have a fight every day, and then after you win or you lose, you either have a counter attack because you smashed the enemy and um, you can now counter attack because you were so superior against your enemy. You have the ability, you have the chance to counter attack and take their plot. So you have another GVG. And if you take their plot, then they have the ability to say, oh God, we lost our plot. We now are allowed through the game to um, punish you by attacking from another plot, which is uh, in the area. 
So we have another GVG and then you can go on forever. If <laughs> if you always smash the enemy, of course. And if they don't run out of plots. But it's mostly if you have one GVG, you can reckon you have like two others uh, as well. That's good to hear. The, the, these GVG fights are what really interested me. G it's just these prolonged MOBA-esque team fights. I know that when you die, even in these fights, you do lose your gear. So do you bring multiple sets of gear? And what kind of cool stuff can you do, like bringing in separate gear as like a sideboard so you can change your battle tactics as a response to kind of like what you see? Um, you have like, uh, once you're in combat, you have a 20 second uh, cooldown before you get out of combat, before you can swap, swap gear. Um, it is possible you take uh, a lot of sets into the uh, GVG. I'd advise everybody to take at least five sets, um, five complete sets into a GVG. You have your chest, you put everything in there. And once you die, you re-equip. But you also can, uh, if you have the time, which you most of the time don't have, you can go back to the chest and get other gear out. That's no problem. So why are these territories fought over by players? You know, why fight outside of it just being fun? But outside of just fun, yeah. It's, um, you have your own, like, if it's about your home plot, it's, it's your home. You've been working on it for weeks, for months, uh, to get it onto the level it is now. And if another guild wants to take it, it it's not like um, everything that disappears on the plot once they take it. They actually can take our home plot, our town, our uh, private town that we built up with all our high tier uh, buildings standing on it. They can just take it if we um, lose GVGs. And, and if we still have something left in chests, uh, we didn't manage to evacuate fast enough. Um, uh, which we'd have to do the day before, once we know we're probably going to lose because we have three, three uh, every home plot has three shields. So you have to lose two behind each other and then decide, are we going to risk it and stay here? Or are we going to uh, evacuate and take everything with us because we're probably also going to lose the third and last fight. And if something stays there, that's for them to take as well. <laughs> And with these territory fights, because they are restricted to 5v5 and you can plan around them based on a time window, they must allow smaller guilds to at least compete for territory against larger guilds. Yeah, uh, if it's not about a, a real city, not like the player made um, home territory, but also I don't want to say the cities aren't player made because all buildings there are also player made. Um, the real cities, I should say, those are 20 versus 20 fights, but everything else GVG wise is 5 versus 5. And it really comes down to your skill and equip. You have to uh, kind of try to out gear, but it's not necessary. Better gear does not automatically give you a win. It also comes down to your setup. If you have a, a good healer, if you have uh, a melee who uh, knows when to charge in and et cetera, et cetera. All right. Just a, just a quick note, he's the healer in his group. So take what he just said of the group. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, you know, <laughs> healers are important. All right, so have we covered everything? We have the open world stuff, the chests and castle fighting. We have the more obvious dueling or just literally roaming by yourself or with others trying to find something to kill, find a poor gatherer, which could also include you know, even looking through open world dungeons to, to try and snipe a boss kill. We touched on the GBG territory fights, the 20 versus 20 town fights. Is there anything else besides that? Yeah, there's also Hellgates and actually you could say the whole uh, PvE content and depending on the territory uh, zone you're in because you can always have like somebody come from behind and stab you in the back while you're trying to do this uh, high tier boss or whatever. In Hellgates, yeah, that's sort of um, training I'd say for uh, GVGs. Um, we use it as training when we don't have GVGs. We go into Hellgates as five, uh, restricted for five people. And uh, the fun fact is another group can join this Hellgate as well. And it's a full loot in this um, instance dungeon, I'd say, because it's maxed to 10 people. Yeah, you just try and kill the mobs, go to the center, wait and see if somebody else is coming with their group, try and kill them and then go for the end boss or uh, camp somewhere and when they are at the end boss you jump in from behind and kill them that way. There's a lot of options for how to successfully uh, do a Hellgate. Yeah.
that's also an option. And uh, if I was just saying training for GVG, there is something new that they want to bring into the game, which would be arenas, which is kind of training with a ranking system. So it's uh, like 5v5, but without losing equipment in an arena. Uh, 1v1s, I guess, as well. 3v3, maybe, I don't know. Because the uh, GVGs are like MOBA type fights. So that's something they also want to implement. So I sit here and I think about a player who solely wants to PvP and nothing else. And it seems like there's a drip of content every hour that's a chest, every day that's a stronger chest, every week, which is something to plan around for, and on top of that, different zones may be up for scheduled GVG attacks or defenses, or they could literally just go looking for trouble roaming or check out Hellgates or practice fighting in a duel. This is all separate from the other facets of the game, but does the stuff get boring or do you feel like you're pulled in so many directions? A lot of times in games, there's one thing that's so good and that's the only thing that you want to do or look forward to doing. How fresh does it stay? Do you ever feel like you need something to do? There's never a time in Elwyn, there should never be. And if you there is, you're doing it wrong. There should never be a time where you say, I don't know what to do. Uh, I have nothing to do. That 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 can't that can't be an option. That is never the fact in Elwyn. You always find or have something to do. There's always an option. And if you're like a full PvP player and uh, PvE or whatever, and there's nobody to do anything with you, you can still go you, do your solo PvP, or you can just go and do something um, other than that and go gathering. What do you think is a real problem in the way GVG is pulled off in Albion? There are some problems like um, when guilds in the black zone go back to the red zones because they don't have enough to do in the black zone because they or don't want to attack each other. I don't know, higher up guilds always team together and then go against the smaller ones. I don't know why, they're just bored. Yeah, that, that always makes me laugh. It, it happens in other GVG games. Strong guilds, they ally together to secure the best benefits or the best areas. But then by doing so, they remove the people that they should be fighting against and then get bored when there's no one to fight against. Okay, so, we should actually just wrap this up, so go ahead, plug anything you want, I'll link your YouTube channel in the description, but you might even want to give a shout out to your guild. Uh, if there are any German people listening, if you're interested in a, a Black Zone guild which can show you new ways of playing the game uh, in a, well, <laughs> I don't want to say a completely new way, but uh, we can actually give you some advice which will benefit you until release and that you are ready for release when it comes and that you're in the best shape possible. If you're interested, come to House Stark. <laughs> That's the name of the guild. Uh, and I know I drifted off sometimes and talk too much. Uh, <clears throat> but I'm sorry for that. And I'd like to just mention, we've talked a lot about PvP, but I just want, don't want people to think that it's a solemnly or only PvP game and only PvP interested people should play it. It's also highly depends on people that craft and farm. Everything builds on the Gavaras and Albion. Now I want to add at the end here that I spoke with Kram for almost an hour and what may not shine through is that it's very easy to talk about the things you can do as a PvP player. But because conflict is driven by constant loss, you're going to die and lose your items, it introduces strange dynamics. Do you equip your best gear that you can't replace or cheap gear that you can replace a hundred times over? There is this old Eve adage, don't fly what you can't afford to lose, but in the realm of GVG, this becomes muddy because, say, in an effort to defend your guild home, which a hundred people, your entire guild, have been working on for a month, you want to select your guild's best players. You want to outfit them not with the best gear that they themselves can obtain, but that the guild as a whole can produce. And this leads to a guild first mentality in a lot of what you do and creates a, a synergy and a connection between players. The happy crafter might enjoy a safe territory with allies nearby filled with high tier crafting buildings and a limitless stockpile of materials, and the gatherer may enjoy the safety of being able to be in a zone with huge supplies of very rare materials and just as they rely on that safety, the champions fighting battles in their name for their home rely on them and they'll feel compelled to answer the call to protect them from a guild harassing them as that's just what they do, what they're there for, that's their place. In Albion, everybody contributes and everybody matters. I'll go ahead and end it there. 
Until next time, this is Fever. Peace.